Hello, this is Bill Murphy from CNN Precision Spindle again. So the question comes up, why would I change my Bridgeport knee mill spindle from the standard bearing arrangement, a three pack, to something more improved like the Browning five pack? If you think about how much load bearings can hold while you're cutting, a three pack is just what it sounds like. Two bearings at the nose with spacers, looks like that, and one bearing at the top. It's worked for years and I don't blame you if you want to keep it, that's great. We sell that arrangement for 575 bucks. We grind the taper, the R8 taper, put new bearings on it and send it back to you. But the only ones that ever do that are the dealers that just want to get the machine running to sell it to the next guy. If you really like your machine and you value milling in a better way, or at least with a stiffer spindle, you want the five pack. Your shaft is just that little bitty skinny guy. So anything you could do to stiffen up this cutting area, holding the tool down below, is going to improve it. It makes sense to me anyway that if I add four bearings there instead of two, I have twice as many balls carrying the load. It gives me a much stiffer shaft and a much better run out. When you get that done and the taper gets ground, then your run out is gonna be so much better, you'll stop measuring your cutters. With the stiffer shafts, more balls carrying the load, this just improves this thing dramatically. As a machinist, I just loved it. This is the first spindle I took out to get repaired when I was a machinist. And it made such a difference that I went and ended up buying the company and building spindles the rest of my life. And that's been 30 years ago. So kind of stuck with that and it's got a sweet spot. You know you have a problem on your knee bill if you got bearing noise in your spindle or you start measuring each cutter to see if it's gonna cut to size or not. Usually the problem is not the cutter. They're very well made, all of them. It's the taper inside that spindle. If you don't have this taper running out close, you can't cut a thou. When a taper wears, it starts wearing down and then leaving a high spot in the middle and then it'll rock or your, your cutters will rock. You won't notice it, but it shows up when you blew it. And we use Prussian blue to check those. If you're starting to measure your cutters for size, and we've all seen those guys get out their mics and measure their cutters like there's going to be a difference. You've had them resharpened, there might be. But if they're new cutters, they're to size. The only difference is, are they cutting to size? And that's going to be directly related to the run out in your taper. If they're running out a couple thousandths, time to get your bearings redone and regrind that taper. You're going to pull that thing out and these bearings are going to be loose and these spacers are going to be jingling. You know they're unloaded if these spacers are jingling when you pull it out. If you can move them around like that, they're too loose. That's time to get your bearings done and get your taper ground. Dean Kamen, thank you for your question. He's rebuilding his own spindle, so he just wanted to buy the bearings. It's the same price whether you buy the bearings or have me do it, and that's to encourage you to let me do it for you and get it perfect. But he put on his own bearings, and he said, I got PhDs working for me from MIT, and they say if I just put four bearings on the nose, two will take the load and the others will just roll. That is correct, but not quite right. The difference is these bearings are matched as a quad or a 7207 DBB, dog boy boy. That makes a matched set of bearings much more expensive we buy them already set up this way with seals. They're ABEX 7 bearings, or P4 in metric, and they're matched together, and then they got a, a triangle mark. So it's basically a V, looks like this, but you know they're matched when you see that triangle mark. That makes sure that all these are carrying equal load, and no two are gonna go jingling, and no two are gonna be tight. They'll still be slightly more tight in the center than the outside ones, but they're all matched, they're all carrying equal load, which is the important part. When those are stiff, tight, it's gonna run out really great. 
Even this spacer has to be flat and parallel within one-tenth of a thousandth. Those little details make all the difference. I'm sure every machinist out there can appreciate those. There's been some spectacular guys get those bearings over the years, and I've advised them if they're doing their own, use the 7207s, use ABEX 7 stuff, and match them. Bill Browning, uh, my mentor, his real name was Raleigh E. Browning, and he was from the Monarch Bearing family in California, Huntington Beach. And that's where the name the Browning Five Pack came from. He semi-retired, moved to Oregon. That's where I met him. And he said that the Five Pack was actually done by Bridgeport for a short amount of time, and then they got rid of it because two more bearings cost them two more bearings. There for a while, they were made with the sealed radial bearings, and they had the spacers in there, but that got you sealed, so that helped. Browning put those in because that's the way he set up his own personal one and liked it that way. That's what I bought the first time and I thought it was amazing. What do you get for your 650 bucks? We're going to make sure this shoulder is perpendicular and flat for two tenths of a thousandths, according to the journals, not the rest of it, just the journals and that shoulder. That's where all the meat happens. Then we're going to grind this dirt shield, tall spacer within a tenth flat and parallel. They're going to get a new lock nut because they're usually all tore up because a helix thread is where all the out of flatness comes from. And I like to see the all the surfaces on the bearings are tight and parallel. We're going to put new bearings on it. I'm going to put four bearings in there instead of these two. I like the sealed 6206, not the open ones. They're radial bearings. There's not a whole lot special about them. We're going to center up this. Assemble this, make sure our runout's good here in the back. Sometimes these run out pretty good. Then we're going to grind that taper once it's all assembled. We're going to grind that on a special machine just for those. We're going to do like that hollow out thing you do sharpening a knife blade. We're going to be tight in the front, tight in the back, and hollowed in the middle. We measure this thing to run out two tenths. And we're actually checking two tenths from three inches from the nose. I know it's a little excessive, but you should be able to get two tenths or less in that taper all day long. When we underground it, and it's only a tenth, we underground it very slightly in the center, and that makes that taper last longer. You're going to love it. I guarantee it. If you get a six-pack, that's four bearings down here at the nose with seals, and then two more angular contacts at the top. I don't do very many of those. They're for the guy that wants to do a tool and die shop in his garage. He's just starting out and he needs all the accuracy he can get right at his fingertips and he's got one machine. That would be the thing for the tool and die guy. You really don't need the extra pair, but it does stiffen up that extra distance. And then we'd put a much tighter spacer on here too. We want that baby real tight. Most people are only gonna need the five pack. Who would get a six pack? Those few guys that are our elite machinists, the tool and die guys, when they got to make everything perfectly the first time within a tenth so that the progressive stamping die or anything else they're working on comes out 4,000 times. So a five pack or even the three pack or the six pack should have no more than two tenths of thousands run out in the taper. Typically a five pack takes three to five days. Your mileage may vary, of course. Living as a spindle is really related to how you're using it. Are you using a big fly cutter and overweighting that tool? It's still a knee mill. It's not a giant mill. So it depends on how you're cutting it, the material you're cutting. Is the five pack going to live longer than a three pack? Absolutely. Is the six pack going to last longer than the five pack? Probably not. They're going to be the same bearings down here on the front. It's going to be stiffer, but not live longer. The question also comes up, do I regrind an R8 taper only and not put new bearings on it? Don't be that guy. If you're going to rich ground taper and send it in, take all this time, put new bearings on it, make sure it's stiff. So if you're interested in doing the five pack, your next question is, how do I get it in and what do I do? You can call us anytime put it in a good wooden box, and send it in. You don't need an RMA number. Just make sure I got your contact information to get your spindle back to you. But I would not send it in 
anything less than a reinforced cardboard box, and I mean reinforced on the edges, but the wood is better. So to get it out of the machine, you can look at our website and that will take you to the instructions on getting that out. So your options are the standard three pack, 575 bucks, they're angular contacts. You can get them open or closed if you have a preference. I prefer sealed ones myself. The five pack, which is 650 bucks, or the six pack, two bearings at the top, that's 950 bucks. Those prices haven't changed for 30 years. I've been able to keep it that way, so I can, so I do it that way. So I hope that explains all of it. I know everybody likes to put their machine back in the same condition it came in, but remember, Bridgeport didn't have all the right answers the first time. They actually came up with that four pack thing in the front, they didn't do it very long. Hope this helps you make a decision. I hope you get your Bridgeport fine-tuned and cranking out some chips. Thanks, I'm Bill Murphy with CNN Precision Spindle.